Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John, and in this video, I'm going to answer a question about the total row of a table. So Don has a great question here, which is, how do I put the sum formula in every column of the total row automatically? And basically what he's referring to is he has a table, and when he clicks on this total row checkbox here, which is located in the design tab under table tools in the ribbon, uh, the total row checkbox will automatically add a total row to the bottom of the table and then it adds a sum to the bottom right cell of the table. But what Don wants is when he clicks that total row checkbox is for all of these columns here to uh, have the the sum function automatically filled so he gets the sum of each column in the table instead of just the bottom right column. And unfortunately that's not r directly possible in Excel, but I will show you a few shortcuts here that'll help make this faster. So one problem you might run into is when you hit Control, C, I'm just gonna hit Control C here to copy this cell and then paste it over here to the other columns. And you'll notice that this formula is not correct. In fact, this formula is still referencing the May column over here. The references don't change. Uh, so it's just still referencing this column over here and you get some incorrect totals. So I'm gonna uh, hit Control Z to undo that. And unfortunately, that is just kind of one of these weird quirks of a table. Uh, con copy and paste doesn't necessarily change the references like if these were normal references to cells or ranges. But one thing you can do is if you just, uh, you could basically drag the formula across. So if you just hover the mouse cursor over the bottom right portion of the cell here, the bottom right corner, you'll see it turns into a little plus symbol. And if I left click and hold that, I can then drag the formula over to the left. And when I let go of the mouse, that'll create those subtotal functions with the correct column references. So now this subtotal function is referencing the January column, and that gives us the sum of the January column. And you could drag formulas to the left or to the right, so I could again hover this on the bottom right corner, drag it back over to the right, and it's gonna do the same thing, which is just fill those columns or those cells with the correct formula. Now, if you're more of a keyboard user and, you, and you're thinking this is kinda takes a lot of time to do that drag across the rows, or I'm sorry, drag across the columns, especially if you have a table that has hundreds of columns, uh, there is one thing you could do with the keyboard shortcut. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those uh, formulas there. What you can do is use the auto sum function, uh, which is located on the home tab of the ribbon. So if I go up to the home tab, over here on the right side of the ribbon is the auto sum function. And the keyboard shortcut for that is alt equal sign. So basically, you can just select whatever columns in, your to in the total row of the table that you want to create the auto sum for and then hit the auto sum button and that will automatically add those subtotal functions here in each column of the table and it'll uh, reference the correct column now one little caveat here you'll notice is that it's not referencing the uh, s the structured reference name or the column name instead it's referencing the cell address of the column in that table so that's one maybe a drawback of using that method um, but the advantage is that, again, if I just clear that out, if I simply just selected all of my columns there and hit Alt equals on the keyboard, that will very quickly add all those subtotal functions. And it does add the subtotal function instead of the sum function. So you could still um, not only see the subtotal function there, but you could use this drop down to then change the uh, metric that it's calculating. So if we wanted to count or find the max instead, I could just change that to max, and then you'll notice it also changes it back to a structured reference formula there. So another little uh, thing that you got to kind of be aware of is if you're going to change those, it does change it back to the column reference instead of the cell reference. So if you'd like to learn more about Excel tables, I have a full-length tutorial video that shows you how to create tables and all the great benefits and features of tables. I hope that helps answer your question, Don, and please leave a comment below with any additional questions or suggestions. If you'd like to get your question answered, head on over to excelcampus.com ask. There you can submit any Excel or VBA related question, and I will do my best to answer it and feature it right here. And don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter to stay updated with new articles and videos. And I will also send you a free gift to help you learn Excel and save time with your everyday tasks. 
Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.